Hello, uh, I'm Ewan. Um, I work on Swift services and infrastructure as Apple. And so, like many of you, hopefully, like many of you, um, I often find myself building container images. And wouldn't it be great if we could streamline that process? Um, especially, even better, if we could do it by integrating the process more closely with the Swift development tools that we already have. So let's see. <clears throat> so let's imagine that I'm working on a Swift service on my Mac, um, and I'm ready to deploy it into the cloud. Um, how can we get from there to here? It used to be that we would just compile and FTP the binary onto the server, and that was it. But now the best way, or one of the best ways, to distribute and run cloud services is to use containers. And what that means in practice is that we need to package it in a container image. Our binary on its own isn't enough. Um, so a container image is a standardized packaging format which holds your application and any supporting files that it's going to need at runtime. Once we have an image, we can publish it to an image store in the cloud called a registry. Um, you've heard of Docker Hub, uh, but your favorite cloud provider or source code hosting site probably also runs a registry of its own. And the beauty of publishing a container image is that once it's in the registry, we can deploy it on any container-based cloud infrastructure we like, whether that's in the public cloud or in a private data center. <coughs> So here's what we have to do. We need to build our server, and we need to publish a container image. Is that it? Well, many of us develop our services on macOS. But when it comes time to deploy, we choose to deploy on Linux, particularly if we're wanting to use containers. Now, Swift is perfectly at home in both environments, but maybe we'd still prefer to do our work in macOS. And then once we have our binary, we're going to need to package it in that container image. And we're going to have to do that again and again every time we want to test or deploy our service. And so that really sounds like a build step. And maybe Swift Package Manager can help us with it. So let's start by looking at our options for building the server binary. Um, you probably have built a container image on macOS before. And it might not have been completely obvious but when you did that, you were actually compiling uh, on Linux itself. You'd have started off by writing a recipe explaining how to build and package your service. And depending on the container runtime software you were using, you might have called it a container file, or a Docker file, or a Podman file, or something like that. You handed this recipe to your container runtime. And behind the scenes, it actually ran a Linux virtual machine. It copied your code in to the VM, and then inside the VM, it ran the uh, Linux version of the Swift compiler uh, to build a Linux binary, which it then ended up putting in the container image. But there is another way uh, that we could build that Linux binary, and we can do it using the Swift compiler that we already have on macOS. And that's because Swift has always been great for cross-compilation. Um, if you think about it, whenever you build an iOS app on your Mac, you're cross-compiling. You're running a Swift compiler natively on macOS, and it's building a binary for iOS. And now Swift SDKs let us take that even further um, by allowing us to cross-compile to Linux, um, and even to different processor architectures, using the open source Swift toolchain. So we'll use the static Linux SDK, which we can get from swift.org. Um, you might have seen it in the What's New in Swift session at WWDC this year. Um, we install it into, the Swift, uh, into our Swift toolchain on macOS, and it gives us the ability to uh, create Linux binaries. And as a bonus, those binaries are statically linked to the Swift runtime, so they have minimal dependencies. We can use the SDK by passing the Swift SDK flag, like this. And everything looks just the same as when we built for macOS except we end up with a Linux binary instead, ELF64. So that's how to build a Linux binary using the Swift compiler that we already have. Um, now we need to package it in a container image. So those can seem actually a bit mysterious because they're usually managed behind the scenes. They're a bit like the Yeti. Bear with me. You see their footprints as they're pushed and pulled around the place. 
You, know, you run a container command and a progress bar creeps across the screen. But you rarely see an image up close. You, um, you don't touch them, as it were. Actually, um, it turns out the images are pretty straightforward inside, um, possibly also like Yetis. Um, <laughs> And because they're an open standard, which was originally defined by Docker and then donated to the Linux Foundation, um, there are now lots of tools which can work with them. And we can equally well build our own tools uh, in Swift. So let's take a look inside. Um, inside the image, there's a tree of objects. And to keep it simple, I'm just going to talk about a single architecture image here. Um, we start with a manifest. And that thing points to a configuration object which has stuff like which binary to run when the container starts, what the default arguments ought to be, which network ports to expose, and that sort of thing. It also points to a list of layers, and these make up the container's file system. Um, they stack up on top of each other. And so typically, your application will be at the top, and then the lower layers will provide stuff like libraries and supporting. All of these metadata objects are JSON. And the, uh, the layers themselves are tarballs. So we can easily build this structure in Swift. Um, we can use Codable for the JSON objects. And now we know how to cross-compile. We can put the cross-compiled binary in a tarball and uh, link it into the layer stack. So now we can uh, build a Linux binary by cross-compilation. And we know how to package it in a container image. The last thing we need to do is to stitch that process all together with Swift Package Manager. Um, but how can it help? It doesn't know anything about containers. Well, it might not know much about building containers, but it knows an awful lot about building Swift. Uh, and in contrast, remember the container build recipe we saw earlier? Um, that's extremely flexible. And sometimes that's exactly what you need. You can use it to put anything you like in a container. But we are building a cloud native style service, and that has a very regular pattern. There's a single binary, maybe a couple of uh, binaries, um, a few supporting files, that sort of thing. And Swift Package Manager will already be doing most of the work of building it. Uh, the container recipe will call out to Swift Package Manager and get the binary that it builds, say thank you very much, and put it in an image. So perhaps we can flip this around. Package.swift tells us pretty much everything we need to know to build our service. And so instead of calling Swift Package Manager from inside a container recipe, let's just teach Swift Package Manager how to build the container all by itself without relying on the VM uh, and, and the runtime. We can provide our, this way a streamlined way to build an image which is complementary to the, the recipe build approach. It's still a very useful way to do things. But we can tailor it to our requirements for building cloud-native Swift services. We can do that by uh, writing a command plugin, which have shown up a couple of times so far today. Uh, command plugins have been part of Swift Package Manager for a few releases now, and they let us extend it to suit our own requirements. Um, we can add our own commands. And also, as you'd expect, we can have our own arguments. And um, the command plugin looks almost like a built-in command. If you remember the Swift build command that we saw uh, a moment ago, uh, it only takes a couple of changes to use the plugin instead. First, we change Swift build into Swift package. And we keep the SDK flag because we still want to cross compile. Then we call our plugin, which we've creatively named build container image. But instead of talking about it, um, let's try it out. <clears throat> so we're going to deploy uh, this. Yes, we're going to deploy this uh, little uh, "Hello World" web service, just a "Hello World" um, app, which will tell us what operating system it's running on. Um, I've already downloaded and installed the Swift open source toolchain. That's an important step that you mustn't skip. And I've installed the uh, static Linux SDK. The plugin itself is packaged as a Swift package, and so uh, I've added that as a dependency in my uh, project, and it's also available. So uh, we can run this command that we saw a moment ago. Um, I'm running a local registry here on my laptop. Um, 
it would look just the same publishing it to the, uh, uh, the public cloud, but I'd be even more nervous about the network. So let's see. How's my luck? So the first thing it's done is it's asked us for permission to push to the network, and that's because on macOS, uh, a plugin runs in a, a sandbox, um, and so it has to ask before it can push things over the network. So we say yes, seems reasonable. Um, and our Hello World service has been built, and then you see output from the plugin saying that it has been wrapped, packaged up in a container image and uploaded to my local registry. Um, and then at the bottom, this is a registry, uh, sorry, a container image reference, which uniquely identifies the container that we've built. And so now I'd like to test that, and typically I would do that on my, my machine here. And this is where um, I will still need to use a, a runtime. Um, I'm going to use Podman, um, which is an open source uh, container runtime. And it expects to take uh, an image reference on the command line. And so I could copy paste this, but um, I'm a lazy software engineer, and I promised you um, a single step to the cloud. So let's see uh, what we can do. Um, what we have here is uh, just a one-liner where I've put that Swift package command that we saw a moment ago in dollar bracket. And what that means is that um, the Swift package uh, invocation will run, um, and whatever it returns, whatever it prints to standard output, will be passed um, as an argument to this podman command. So we'll get that going. Still have to say yes. So this time what we expect to happen is um, the container and service will be rebuilt. Uh, it shouldn't take very long. Um, and that reference will be passed through to Podman. Podman will pull the image and run it. So that it goes through and it's started. So if I here, I can see it on localhost. And there we are. As you can see, we're running apparently on Ubuntu. And that's because this image is stacked on the Swift Slim by default, by, on the Swift Slim image, which is based on Ubuntu. Now, I think we can do better than this. This is a bit impersonal. So let's see. Typing here is tricky. So I'll just make a little change. There we go. I save my code. And then I'm finished with this container, so I will stop it. And then I'll run the same command again, more or less. This time I'm going to add this allow network connections all flag. And that will mean we won't be prompted for network access. It's the same process. So again, uh, we get a rebuild. Um, <clears throat> it's an incremental build. Um, and uh, sometimes Swift Package Manager uh, gets revenge for all the mean things that I've done to it. But today, it's being nice to me. Um, so it's rebuilt our service. Um, it's uh, now the plugin is packaging it in a container image. And it's pushed it, and it's up and running. So. Uh, Let's see if we did it. There we go. Much better. So now I'm ready to push to the cloud. So for the final part, I will get rid of this development container here. And I'd like to deploy it in Kubernetes. Um, I'm running Minikube again locally. Um, get that going while I see what's happening. When the plugin pushes uh, an image up to the registry, uh, conventionally, we um, also set the latest tag to point to whatever it was we pushed. It's not absolutely the best practice if you're doing this in production, looking for the SRE people here who would be horrified. But it'll do for now. Um, <clears throat> the, uh, this deployment otherwise is entirely what you'd expect. There's a deployment, um, a service, and an ingress. Um, and it's come up. So this is the same container that we just tested. If I clear that, and I can access it uh, on its final URL uh, running in my Kubernetes cloud. <coughs> so this idea of returning the image reference and chaining it to deployment command um, it's inspired by a tool called Cope, which is a container image tool from the Go world. Um, and this idea of chaining gives us tremendous flexibility. We've just used this command here to deploy into Podman. 
but we can deploy to a different container uh, service just by plugging in a different deployment command. So we could use Knative, which is an open source uh, functions as a service platform built on top of Kubernetes. Um, but the really interesting part, for me at least, is what happened in this Swift package command in the brackets. So when we ran that, Swift package manager started up and it spawned our plugin, passing it the plugin command line arguments. <clears throat> the plugin then called back into Swift package manager and asked it to refresh the hello world target. And it, Swift package manager did that using the static Linux SDK. So that produced the Linux binary that we need. And the plugin then wrapped that in a container image using a helper tool uh, written in Swift. If you noticed in the output from a moment ago, there was a target called container tool, which went past in the build output, and that is the helper, um, which uh, helps the, the plugin to do its work. That uploaded the image to the registry, and then when everything was done, it returned the image reference, and Swift Package Manager printed that on the terminal, ready to go into the next command. So that's the life cycle of the command plugin in this case. So we've seen how we can use the Swift tools that we already have to build a Linux binary on Mac OS and package it in a container image. All of this orchestrated for us by Swift Package Manager. <coughs> now, if you'd like to learn more about cross-compilation with the static Linux SDK and try it out for yourself, um, take a look at the blog post uh, on swift.org. Uh, it has links to the installation instructions and it'll walk you through an example. But Swift SDKs are actually even more flexible than we've had the chance to see here. Um, we've been using the static Linux SDK, but if you want to build a dynamically linked binary, maybe you want to link against a third party library, something that's provided for your underlying Linux system, then you can use the Swift SDK generator and create a custom SDK that's tailored to your exact requirements. And as was also mentioned in one of the previous talks, there's currently a lot of effort going on in, uh, in the SDK generator uh, around building WASI SDKs. And finally, if you think that the plugin that we've had a look at today could help streamline your deployments, it's easy to install. Uh, as I mentioned, it's distributed in a Swift package. And so to make it available, you just add it as a dependency uh, in your package.swift file. And this is the one that we just saw for that Hello World service. Um, so Swift Container Plugin is a new open source project and it stitches together these fantastic tools that we already have in Swift with SDKs and cross compilation to streamline the process of building container based Swift services. You'll find it on GitHub in Apple slash Swift container plugin. It's still very early days, but please try it out. File issues, send me pull requests. We'd love to hear what you think. Thank you. <laughs>